Well, it's a very complex issue because uh, <coughs> everywhere in the world, uh, both uh, financial sectors and the uh, developer industry tend to, uh, of course, uh, uh, provide uh, solutions to the uh, wealthy people, it's much easier. Uh, so, uh, trying to bring uh, both supply and finance uh, to serve uh, lower income groups uh, involve a whole set of uh, uh, instruments and uh, policies, and uh, we have uh, an experience in doing so uh, in many countries from Mexico to Egypt or uh, Tanzania, and, uh, for instance. So it's a combination which, of course, will depend uh, from a country, to, will uh, change from a country to another one. But uh, uh, basically, uh, in South Asia, uh, the key points would be to make sure that there is a land supply with a proper urban regulation to uh, avoid you know, uh, land price speculation and uh, inflation. Uh, we need to have... Uh, uh, <coughs> lenders uh, ready to serve this, uh, so it's not always uh, mainstream banks, but uh, we have to support uh, the grassroots lenders or um, uh, microfinance institutions we want, which want to develop uh, housing products. Uh, the governments, of course, uh, must be involved and, uh, with uh, efficient subsidy policies. That's a very important thing. And finally, um, we have to provide uh, funding solutions to the lenders because housing finance is by definition long-term uh, resources to make it affordable, which means that uh, lenders must have access to uh, adequate uh, resources in terms of uh, liquidity, in terms of interest rates. So we have a kind of a, a typical uh, toolbox here, yeah, I would say, uh, on all these uh, different issues and uh, work out the best uh, customized solution for uh, each country, depending uh, what is lacking uh, in this uh, specific context.